Hello ladies and gents. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a quiz app using Thunkable. To do this, we're going to need to use something called conditional statements. On the screen, I have created an app that consists of three separate screens. Screen one has a question with three possible answers and a timer. Screen two has a well done message and a button taking you to the next question. And screen three is a copy of the first screen, only this time with a different question and a different set of answers, followed by another timer. Now, when I run this app in web preview mode, you can see it says, question one, what is the world's largest ocean, Pacific, Atlantic, or Indian Ocean? And I have 20 seconds to answer the question. Each time I click an incorrect answer, the button changes to red. And when I click the right answer, it changes to green and takes me to the next question screen. When I click the next question button, it takes me to the next part of the quiz. And I see the next question and the timer starts to run again. So let's look at how I made this. I will exit the web preview on this working app and then I will switch to my blank copy where the screens are exactly the same as before only this time when I go to the blocks tab there is no code so this app won't actually work because I've not created the code required to make it function. If I go back to the design window you can see that screen one has several different components. We have a label for the timer where the timer counts down. This is the yellow box with the number in it. Label two is the time title. So the timer title there, just above the timer. Then I have a label for the question and then buttons A, B, and C for the three different answer options. So what I'd like to do is create some code to get these buttons working and to get the timer working. So let's start by setting up the timer. Even though you see a number in the timer box, that is simply a number I've added to the label here. So right now it says 10, but I could change that to anything. So I could leave that as 10 for now, which I'm going to do, but we're going to actually start the timer at 20. So to add the timer, go to the blocks tab and scroll down to timers. It's in the far left hand side of the screen towards the very bottom of the list under app features. If you click on timers and you click on the plus icon, we can create a timer. Under interval, this is the length of the timer. I'm going to set this to 20 seconds. We're going to count down, so I won't turn count up on. We're not going to have it repeat uh, and we're not going to enable anything additional. So we're just going to leave it at a 20 second timer. So with that set up, just click the submit button. Now that time has been set up, I can start to create some code for screen number one. So remember, right now I'm looking at screen number one and to go to the code for that window, we need to go to the blocks tab. So the first thing I'm going to do is in the far left hand side, I'm going to scroll up to the UI components and click screen one. And I'm going to drag in when screen one opens. From there, I'm going to say, pick from the control panel, navigate to screen one. So this means no matter what screen we're looking at, when we first run the app, it will always open at screen one. So even if you're working in screen two or screen three or any other screens you've added and you hit um, the web preview button, it will always automatically start the app in screen one. It won't do that if you miss this block. So this is really important. Then what we're going to do is start the timer. So if we scroll down to the timer again, you can see under timers, we have a timer called timer one, and then a small cog for the timer settings. If I just click on the timer, 
it lets me access um, some different blocks for the uh, the timer function. So what I'm going to do is drag in call timer one start. So that means that when screen one opens, timer one is going to begin counting down. And it's going to begin counting down from 20 because that's the number that we set up earlier. Then I'm going to go back to control and I'm going to choose a forever loop. And I'm going to drag that in underneath the start of the timer. Then I'm going to go back to the timer. Um, sorry, I'm going to go to the label, which is the timer, where the number is going to be visible on the screen. And I'm going to scroll down to set label timers text. So I need to find that in the list. Set label timers text. There it is. It's right at the top. I missed it then. So I'm going to click on that and drag that into the forever loop. And you can see right now it says set label timer. So that's the little label on my screen one where the number will be counting down. Set its text attribute to. And now it just says label at the minute. We need to replace that. So I'm going to click back on the timer and choose timer one, uh, timer one's time in seconds. And I'm going to replace that pink block with this. There we go. So now we have a block of code that says when screen one opens, navigate to screen one. So screen one always opens first. Call timer one start. That begins the timer. And then in a forever loop, we're going to set the label which is the number on our screen, set that text attribute to whatever the timer is that's running behind the scenes and set that in seconds. So when we run this now, you can see the timer is starting to count down from 20 to zero. Let me exit this web preview for a moment and we'll continue creating the code. So I'm gonna drag this just to the top left-hand corner of the window so I've got more space to work with. And now I'm going to get the buttons working. So to do that, again, in my blocks window, I'm going to need to choose the first one, button A, because I want button A to do something. Now, the question is, What's the world's largest ocean? And the world's largest ocean is the Pacific Ocean. So that's the correct answer. So if we go back to blocks, make sure button A is clicked and selected. And I'm going to drag in the when do block for button A. So when button A is clicked, do something. So I'm going to need to use a control block. And it's this one here, if do else. So I'm gonna drag that into place, and we're going to say, if a certain condition is met, do something, otherwise, do something else. So I'm going to go back to our timer options, click on timer one, and drag timer one time in seconds. I'm gonna drag that in for a moment. And I'm also going to use a logic block because we're going to check something. So we're going to use the greater than block. So I'm gonna drag this in. So if timer one's time in seconds is greater than, and we're going to need a math block for this. So if the timer is greater than zero, we're going to do something. So if button A is clicked, do timer one's time in seconds is greater than zero, do something. So I'll go to control and I'm going to say, no, I'm going to go to button A and I'm gonna change its uh, background color. So set button A's background color because I want the background color to indicate you've got the answer correct. So I'm gonna change that color to green. And then I'm going to go to control and say, wait one second. 
So once you know that you got the answer right because the button's background color changes to green, it's just gonna wait one second before moving on. So then I'm going to take the control block and say, navigate to screen number two, which is the correct answer screen. Otherwise, we need to keep the timer running and let you pick the other options if you get it wrong. So for that, I need to go to control again, take a forever block and put that in the else gap there. And then finally, I'm going to go to the timer again and then go to set Actually, the block I'm looking for isn't in this list because it's already in the code window. So I'll just duplicate this. So I can duplicate this block and drag it into the forever loop. And now that block is finished. So when button A is clicked, if timer 1's time in seconds is greater than zero, set button A's background color to green and then wait for a second. Then navigate to screen two. So move on to the well done screen. Otherwise, we're just going to keep running that timer down to zero forever. So let's see if that works. So click web preview and choose the correct answer, which is the world's largest ocean, Pacific Ocean. There we go, green, waits for a second and goes on to the well done screen. So that's all working, that's perfect. So let's get the other buttons working. So to do that, that's really simple. We're going to use the same code, only if you get the answer correct, the button is going to change to a red color to let you know you've got it wrong. And it's not going to navigate to screen two. So simply duplicate this block and move it somewhere out of the way in the screen. So we've got our first block for when screen one opens, our second block when button A is clicked. So this block needs to be when button B is clicked. So if button B is clicked and the time as time in seconds is greater than zero, set, let's change that from button A to button B, set button B's background color to red. And it was already red there. So you could change it to any color you like, but we'll leave it as red because that indicates that you got it wrong. And then we're going to simply take out the navigate to screen two, and we're going to take out the wait block as well. So I can just drag those back over to the side panel so they are removed from the project. Um, and then continue with the loop here. So um, if timer one's time in seconds is greater than zero, set button B's background color to red. Otherwise, set the label time as text to timer one in seconds. So it will just keep the timer running. And then to make the third button work, we need to duplicate this. And all we need to do this time, it works in exactly the same way as the code we've just created, is change button B to button C. And for the background color line, we're going to change that to button C as well. So now we have four different code blocks. Let's just go through those one more time. When screen one opens, navigate to screen one. So screen one always opens up when we start the app. Call timer one start. So that starts the timer running. Forever, set the uh, label timer. So that's the text on the, on the screen with the number set that text to the timer's time in seconds. So whatever the timer is set at, that's what will display in the label. And then we've got our right answer box. So when button A is clicked, if timer one's time in seconds is greater than zero, set button A's background color to green so we know we got it correct. Wait for a second and then move on to the screen two, which was the winning screen. Otherwise, so else, forever, set label time as text to whatever the timer is in seconds. So that will just keep the timer running until it ticks down to zero. And then for the incorrect answers, so for this question, it would be button B and button C. When button B is clicked and the time as time in seconds is greater than zero, set button B's background color to red. Otherwise, so else, forever, keep the timer running.
and it's exactly the same for button C. Now, all we need to do to get this working is go to screen two, and we're going to put the code in for the next button. And that's really simple. We're just going to click on um, the button in the uh, UI component. So remember, we are now in screen two. We're not working in screen one anymore. So UI components, button one, and I'm going to use this block here, when do. So when button one is clicked, do, very simple. We're going to go to control and then choose navigate to screen. And the second question is on screen three in my app. And that's it, that gets the button working. So now, regardless of which screen I'm clicked on currently, and right now I'm looking at screen two, when I click on the web preview, it automatically goes to screen one because that's what I told it to do in the code. You can see the time is ticking away. What's the world's largest ocean? The Indian Ocean. Incorrect. The button changes to red. Atlantic Ocean. Incorrect. The button changes to red. Pacific Ocean. Correct. And it moves on to the well done screen. And I managed to get that question answered in just the nick of time. Now click the next question button and we're presented with another question. Now, I don't have this um, working yet because I took the code out, um, but if I just exit out of preview mode, go to screen three, there is some code from before when I copied this over from a previous project. So all I'm going to do is choose timer one, fix that. Everywhere you see timer one, I'm just going to fix that. The reason this isn't working is because this was a remnant from the project before I deleted the code for this example. So I'm basically just updating the timer here so it works properly. There we go. Okay, now let's see if all those um, screens work. Now remember, for my second question, it says, what's the world's fastest animal? So the first question, button A was the correct answer, but this time the world's fastest animal is cheetah uh, or a cheetah. So that would be button B. So in the code blocks here, I've simply changed for the, uh, the correct answer block to button B1, button B1 here. And then for the incorrect answers, I've changed it to button A and C. So all I've done is switch the, uh, the, the buttons in the code. But other than that, the code is exactly the same. So let's run this app and see if it works. So Indian Ocean, no. Atlantic Ocean, no. Pacific Ocean, yes. There's the well done screen. Next question. What's the world's fastest animal? The blue whale, no. Horse, no. And cheetah, yes. And it moves on to the correct answer screen. Now you might need to have multiple correct answer screens um, for the next question, but that's for another tutorial. So this is how you get the quiz app using conditional statements up and running. And now you understand how to implement a question and uh, a timer. So try it for yourself and try to get the quiz up and running with more questions and maybe an ending screen if you are successful and able to get through all of them. Okay, good luck.